Relations, marketing, and social media and healthcare requires making the right moves at the right time. Welcome to the overrated and underused show. Here's your host, experienced marketers Jen Jennings and Tom Testa, with special guest Adrian Stoner. Overrated and underused, the overrated and underused show. Welcome to Overrated and Underused. We are your hosts, Tom and Jen. Back for another episode um, of your favorite healthcare marketing radio program. Nope, that is not how we say it. It is the award-winning All right. Hitmic Podcast of the Year. We really got to keep milking that, Jennifer. We got to write it out for another You're right. year. You're right. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. I am Jen, as I always am. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Jen, I can't, what I can't believe is summer flew by for us here on the ONU radio show. It's already September. It is What's fall. Happening? It's been fall already up here in New England. I mean, New England, we've got, you know, two months of summer and uh, 10 months of fall, winter, everything else. So Labor- yeah, the, my, that's it. I know I got to wait till Labor Day, but you know what? My, my white pants are away. That's it. There's no more summer here. <laughs> my favorite things about fall are definitely the cooler weather, football, yeah fires festivals mm-hmm. all the f's <laughs> jennifer what are we talking about today mainstream versus trade press ah dissecting the media yeah mainstream media versus pre- okay all right i like this topic it's well it, it it'll go against everything that we've ever been taught to talk badly about press any oh in, in any form so right it kind of hurts my soul to say anything is overrated. Very true. My goodness, you're right. I, well, we'll try and keep it. We, you know us. We're 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 a clean and we're a friendly show. So I think we'll play nice as we always do. Not with each other. I mean, you know, you you viciously attack me nonstop. But when it comes to the press, we will. Uh, we're always going to play nice. And and I think this is a great topic because when it comes to the media in general, these are really two two different kind of beast so to speak right because you get your when you talk mainstream versus trade press yeah let's talk about it because i think all of our listeners are just you know maybe maybe they don't really understand the the intricacies of of what we're talking about so mainstream media you know it's all those consumer outlets the ones that you hear about you know they have the the largest broadest audiences you know it's networks like cnn fox news abc bbc Mm -hmm. newspapers like new york times washington post wall street journal those news agencies like associated press reuters bloomberg and then of course magazines you know forbes time people all those big well-known names Um, right right and they're the ones you know they're always the ones that folks would love to get in because of and we'll get into this you know the readership that's involved with that but they're tough you know, you and, and that's what we'll talk about. Not not impossible yeah. to get into, not impossible, but you know, you, you just yeah, look at I those think, names, yeah. look, you, you know the stories they're covering. And and you, so so I that's why I say that. Yeah. So it's I mean, obviously we're talking about readerships and like viewers that are in the multi-millions. These are very coveted placements, you know, from a, a publicity perspective. So like nobody's gonna be like, eh, nah, I'll, I'll pass on that New York Times interview. Like, let's let's not do that. My, I've got yoga on Tuesday. Like, I'm just <laughs> let's not do that. So, a lot of companies, you know, unless it is something, you know, that's that's fun in a negative way. But are they overrated as a target for building your PR and like media relations outreach program? towards i think that's where the discussion goes because like yeah no like any of those things a a great you know a a positive placement in any of those or or even a mention in any of those outlets would be fantastic for a lot of companies i think in in some ways the the effort the resources and everything that kind of has to come together and what you as a company have to have in place in order to achieve something like that in most cases is that worth all of that. Yeah. I think personally, you know, when, when I'm pitching media outlets, you know, you really got to ask yourself too. It's, it only becomes maybe overrated 
if your if your expectations aren't right. So or you have to really know what you're pitching to these mainstream outlets too. You know, for example, the New York Times, they're not going to write a feature on your latest telehealth product necessarily, right? The, the, the launch of a new product or a new program, they're, they're all going to be more interested in the human interest story. So you really got to figure out what your end goal is. So they would, they become maybe overrated if you think everything you do and want to say publicly, every press release you write should be covered in these mainstream publications. I really don't think any of our listeners feel that way. I think, you know, those who who are really in the trenches, the, the marketers, the publicists know uh, they have the right expectations for the news. So, but again, like you said, it these are the most coveted of placements. So you've got to think too, these are the reporters who are getting, I don't know, hundreds of pitches a day. So that's why it- Thousands. Th- thousands, right. So that's why it's more, how does your news stand out to these others, and that's probably another topic for another time. But but yeah, I I, I in the end, uh, I just feel like you know these are these are great publications, and these are the ones that you you know you you put on your your refrigerator after you get a, a placement in one of these bad boys. And this is the piece that if you do get placement that you showcase everywhere, you know your homepage and email. And this is right; it's the the Mount Olympus potentially of coverage. Yeah, and I think you know especially for. I mean, we work in healthcare and and there are, like you mentioned, you know, those human interest stories, but building that story doesn't come from a, I mean, it's not going to be an executive profile, a Q&A with your CEO. Like it's going to be, you have changed the lives of some patients or some major issue or, right. you know, it's, it's building those stories takes a, a lot of work and a lot of resources. And I mean, just recognizing that, but like, you know, not everybody kind of has those pieces that can come together or those, those customers or those stories, That's right. customers, but patients, I mean, right. I say customers, but it, it's really not customers. It's, you know, it's patient stories more or less. So I, I think most executives or, you know, and even marketers love the idea of mainstream, you know, but it just doesn't always work in practice. Like, you know, some executives just want to say, you know, oh, we got that awesome placement in the Wall Street Journal. Or, you know, certainly like if we're if we're pitching prospective clients, you know, just personally, if that's what they're coming to us for, to I really want to get get a Wall Street Journal placement. That's kind of a to me, that's like a red flag. Like, so that's like a dating red flag in yeah. Yeah, you know their their expectations. So, but you know, after an honest conversation about all the things we're going to talk about on this show, and like realistically, you know, what we would need in order to build that story for those type of outlets for a mainstream media, large publication like that, if they were receptive to that, then like then that's great. That's a good sign. But you know, sometimes you don't always get through. They kind of just want to have their their colleagues and spouses, you know, right. put it on the refrigerator and, and just have the, be able to say, oh, well, I was mentioned in the Wall Street Journal. And, and you know, it's, and that's true. And it's probably like you, you said, it's probably a good for a, you know, what makes a successful pitch episode or something like that. But you're right. But packaging a story for a mainstream publication is huge. So not to just continue to, to beat this dead horse, but you're right. You have not only the, the news that you're trying to pitch, but then you have, you know, the the customer, which might be the hospital or, you know, or a provider. And then you have their patients and be able to package that whole story for a mainstream. That that's the story the mainstream media likes to tell. Um, not that trade don't, because there's certainly instances where, yeah, trade would love to talk to a uh, especially a customer in that case, or more the provider. They don't really need to necessarily talk to the patient sometimes. But I think you're right. Packaging everything together, making sure you have that. That complete story is really essential for a lot of these mainstream, these real top mainstream press. But I will say this, when it comes to certain areas of the country, sometimes there are members of the mainstream press that are even just focused on your area, which is kind of interesting. So like there's the AP, you know, you mentioned the Associated Press when you were running through uh, some of the wire services there with Bloomberg and Reuters. They have state agencies. So sometimes there's a good chance that they the AP might cover your local news. And sometimes it doesn't have to be like, you know, the whole, here's a patient, here's a provider, here's a, th- there might be something that's just really impacting that area and some good news coming out of that state, that bureau. So again, I feel like I should 
should maybe just look into this a little bit more, but I remember, you know, New York Times, for example, they have bureaus in many states, and sometimes they would cover a local angle within that bureau, and it would end up in the New York Times, but it would be based out of, like, you know, the Austin, Texas Bureau or something like that. So something else just to consider when looking at mainstream is the the ind independent, you got the, you know, the mothership, the mainstream one that everyone knows about, you know, that gets delivered to your front door if you're still a paper person or or you read online. And then there's those independent bureaus, too, that sometimes cover uh, local news, uh, as it will. So something else to think about. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess there are kind of two maybe divisions of that. So there's the larger, like broader mainstream and then yep. maybe more regional it's still, cause I, I would still call it mainstream, like a, you know, a business journal, Atlanta business journal, you know, those, or, or what would you call those? So yeah. call it like regional, I mean, it's still mainstream media. It's still like a consumer outlet right, versus right. a trade publication. No, you're right. That's regional. Yeah. That's more of a regional, it, you know, it, do, it might not have a national readership, but it's still, it's not a trade publication. Right. It's still, yeah. It's still got that like broad mainstream consumer yep. type audience. So you're reaching, you know, everybody, you're reaching people, you know, that care about healthcare and healthcare technology, and you're reaching plumbers and architects and, you know, people that really don't. Yep. <laughs> so it's, right. it's, just a, it's mainstream media, but it is a more focused and, you know, regional type of target. So yeah, uh, yep. there's the, there's the mainstream that we, you know, like the New York times where it's read throughout the country, throughout the world. Um, and then there are those that are regionalized or in a regional uh, based publications that um, might not have the national readership, but again, they they don't really, uh, as you said, categorize themselves as trade publications, trade press. Right. Okay. So let's talk about trade press. We've talked a lot about what the, like defining the mainstream, but let's, let's talk about what we actually mean when we say trade press. Cause we love the trade press. Obsessed. <laughs> I am their I'm their biggest fan. <laughs> That's it. No, we do. I mean, they they're a big part of, especially those of us working in the healthcare IT space. They're a huge, huge part of our day to day media relations efforts. So go ahead, Jennifer, tease them. What talk to us? What's the trade press about? <laughs> okay, so when we talk about trade press, we're talking about you know smaller, more targeted, specialized kind of media outlets. So mm -hmm. focused on a very narrow and kind of specific audience. And really it's a publication or an outlet that focuses exclusively on, you know, the ins and outs of a given industry or, you know, so this could be, you know, in our space, names like modern healthcare, medical economics, intelligent publications, healthcare IT news, healthcare innovation, health IT answers, healthcare IT today. Definitely. No, you're, but you're right though. And, and again, like you said, they, they're a little bit more typically focused on, on a, on a either very narrow or more of a narrow audience. You know, you take something like, and sometimes it's right in the title. Sometimes the titles just give it away like healthpayer intelligence, right? That's an right. intelligent publication. You mentioned intelligent. We know who they're focused on. They're, 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 they're going to be tailoring their news to the payer industry. So, uh, so yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. I think they're, they're smaller, but they're so, and, and by smaller, we don't mean, you know, there's, it, it's, three people reading. I mean, these still have some real big numbers in terms of either, you know, most of them are web-based. So when you get into unique visitor per month, they're still in the, you know, six figure, six digit numbers, right? You know, over a hundred thousand, hundred thousand plus unique visitor per month in some of these publications. So again, they're, they're smaller and that they're not maybe like the 2 million, but, but they're still very impactful, especially to the readership who is focused on reading these trades. They have a, a big influence to a lot of the executives, just people who are decision makers in those industries. And they're turning to these trades uh, to get their news. Yeah. So yeah, while the, the overall numbers are smaller than, you know, in comparison to New York Times, Washington Post, all mm -hmm. of that, they are, to me, you know, more valuable in yep. that if you're looking at targeted people that will actually care about, you know, the story that's being told or, you know, your company and, you know, actually deliver some value from that, you know, you're getting recognition by a targeted audience that you, you know, want to, that impacts your business, that are potential customers of your business and that making a difference, the ratio of those re readers are much higher in a trade publication because they're coming there because they care about 
healthcare payment Mm -hmm. like news and they care about how those processes kind of work and they Mm -hmm. care about delivering value like they care about all those things that are being talked about in that niche audience so so to me that's the better bang for the buck but that's why we focus on it (laughs) that's right i might be jumping the gun but i think they're underused and more so to, I'd say, those not necessarily in the industry, because we know the value, but those who who may be, and again, I guess trades, I guess trades can span that. They obviously do. They span beyond healthcare, right? Mm-hmm. There are trades in every industry. <laughs> yeah. So I shouldn't just talk like, you know, well, we are a healthcare marketing. This is what program. we know, yeah. That's right. So I think those who who maybe once had a focus, who maybe come from an industry or or come from maybe a, a, a big provider or, or, you know, who they... The focus was the mainstream publication. They didn't really maybe have to get into the trade so much that I think that they could be, that they are an an underused component of media pitching. But again, you know, I I think, I think they are essential. uh, And, and I think trade publications too, they, at the end of the day are, like I said earlier, I think they're the ones that the the really key decision makers read. Because again, beyond just products and the buying of side of things, a lot of these trade publications which mainstream not don't necessarily get into are a lot of the rules and regulations that impact the industry and you can you read that you get a lot of that news from the publications that you rattled off at, you know when we were talking about the trade press especially things like modern healthcare and the the hymns publications and things like that it goes beyond the newsmakers and thought leaders but also again those important rules and regulations impacting the industry and the trade publications are a great place for that yeah If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Overrated and Underused on Healthcare Now Radio. Today's episode is on mainstream press versus trade press. All right, Jennifer. (laughs) Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. (laughs) Okay, so now that we kind of know what is what, Mm -hmm. the real question, is mainstream press overrated or underused? Oh, Again, I, I think we're kind of, we've hinted at this. It all depends who you ask, right? I'm asking you. Well, that that's a lot of pressure. Is I think it's only overrated. Well, I guess that's not the question you're asking. Okay, I'm just going to answer it. Overrated. In the healthcare IT industry in terms of who we really need to get to help deliver our message. It's overrated in that it's not, it, it, I don't necessarily think, think it needs to be the focus of every media pitch of everything you launch and want to say publicly, it's overrated in that aspect. Yeah, I agree. I say it is overrated unless we have any listeners that are reporters for any of these outlets. So then Oops. You can slide into my DMs and we will talk. But no, I think it is, I think it is overrated and not the placements themselves. Right, I just right. think the emphasis and the focus on, you know, making that what your end goal is. I think is overrated. There's so many more valuable ways that you can do PR and your media relations efforts and where you can actually put your time into that spinning wheels on something, unless you, you do have all the pieces together and and you have a team that, that could build the right story. So if that happens, then that's great. But if it's not there, it's not there. So, yeah. So I think we'll all say like, I, I mean, I'd love to get every single one of my clients and in Forbes, but it's just not a realistic goal to, to focus all the efforts on. So, and I agree. Like, and that's why I just say one more point about that, including mainstream media in your, as identifying targets for your overall media strategy is not overrated. You know, you want to know, Hey, if we have the story, which mainstream publications are going to be the ones we want to target? Cause there are some, like, you, you know, we said there's the mainstream news outlets like the Post and the, you know, et cetera. And then there are mainstream consumer and business publications, too. So you could identify those as part of your overall strategy. But again, like you said, going trying to turn to them every with every pitch, with every news item you're releasing probably is it is overrated. So I think this goes to say, like, unrealistic expectations are overrated. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. You know, obviously, I think, you know, for, for many of our clients and many people in, in this kind of space, mainstream is overrated, but there are some instances where it, it might be right for you. Like you said, like if we're crafting the right pitch, um, and if the pieces are there, 
I think, you know, if you have those pieces, then mainstream, you know, should be a big strategy for your, your PR. But, you know, I think if you're really just looking for more, you know, selling more product services, improving your market share, your stories may be more complex or, you know, needs more details to fully explain like how this works within kind of the, the ecosystem of everything. Or if you really just don't have the end user kind of human impact story or those resources that you can kind of tie into the piece or customers willing to kind of speak on your behalf, or if you have limited hours or or funding to kind of put into these long-term campaign builds, then trade press is, is certainly the bigger target there. Yeah. And, and, and in the message itself too, we, we, we talked about this a lot about what, what it takes to make a great consumer national pitch. But if you're also going to be very technical and and not necessarily jargony, but just technical in nature and what you're trying to explain, mainstream might not be the best, you know, uh, target for you. Yeah. I mean, trade outlets, they don't have that zest and that sparkle, Uh. you know, that (laughs) mainstream press might have with their names, but they're designed to be that way. They're focused on really delivering factual information that helps their market and their audience do their jobs better, make better purchasing decisions, educate them on happenings within their space. So they care about more specifics and intricacies of everything happening within the space versus the mainstream kind of wants those like salacious, wow, you know, stories that are really going to, you know, catch a general audience consumer's attention, you know, maybe somebody that doesn't know anything about how healthcare works. And, you know, they see this story and they're like, oh, wow, I can't believe that's happening. Or, you know, those, those kind of things. So it's not going to be the, the case study of Maine Town Hospital improve their patient billing, you know, system and it saved them 50 hours of of time. Like that's great for that hospital, but that's not great for a mainstream press. Yep. That's true. And you know, one thing, and you made me think about that too, when you're thinking about titles that that might work for mainstream versus trend uh, trade uh, publications are the hooks too. So the news hook, like, so not that uh, trade press do not follow the news cycle. Of course they do. And of mm-hmm. course a news hook gives you a better shot, but you know, the, the new, the, uh, more of a mainstream title may totally follow a, a, a news hook or, or the news cycle. So, you know, obviously with COVID and the pandemic, you know, that title might be more pandemic related and, and reducing hospital readmission rates, or I don't know, I'm kind of rambling, but you know what I'm trying to say here? I think it's more, the news cycle is definitely more of a factor in mainstream, not necessarily all the time with the trade press who cover what you said, who are looking more to educate and also inform their readership too. Again, news hooks are, are still important. You know, we definitely, no doubt about it. It's not like they're ignoring what's going on out in the real world. I don't know. Is there really a pandemic? We didn't know that. Talk to us about it. But it allows you to also, you know, offer up news that might not necessarily tie into a news hook where I really think the mainstream press are always looking for something that's say, what's, what's being talked about out there right now? What are consumers talking about? What are, what's really impacting them the most? And that's where you get into following the news cycle in the mainstream press. Yeah. So that's interesting. You kind of talk about the the news hook and, you know, are the pitching styles, you know, this pitching styles for, for each are, are very different. We've kind of talked, we've talked about how we, you know, you need to build this perfect pitch right. for um, this unicorn pitch for mainstream media in most cases. And I think regional outlets do come into play. They should not be overlooked uh, by by publicists or anyone pitching uh, news media because they do have a very big impact as well. It might be more, like you said, they might appeal more to you and what you're offering. It's it's not the same as getting into local news, right? So, like, I'm 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 looking to get my story in the uh, local Nashville newspaper. So it's a little bit more because you get a little more of a broader reach even though it's regional because it's it's a region you know it's not it's not a city or or you know maybe more localized so so i think it it might not have the national impact but yeah it's still regional publications like those business journals are i think equally important and probably yeah like like you like you said they're underused i think in a lot of uh, media pitching 
Okay, so trade press, underused, mainstream, overrated, regional, underused? Yes, I'm good with that. We wrap this whole episode up in in seven seconds. That's it. That's the, if you need the summary, that's it. No, but I mean, after all that, like, honestly, we do like to see kind of a mixture in the forms of coverage. So mainstream, trade, regional, you know, I think there's a, a place and a purpose for each, but it is important to really understand the differences and what they cover, why they cover it, you know, how their goals and like how they package things for the audience, because mm-hmm. that's their readership. At the end of the day, all they're trying to do is get great numbers for their stories. So they want stories that are going to, you know, their re- readership is going to resonate with, you know, you, you kind of got to put yourself in those shoes and think about what their audience would care about. And then the way, and, you know, just what might interest them. Like, I mean, it could be, you know, like you said, the, the news hooks, the angles, like the way you package things up are, are very different to, to each of these audiences. All right. Well, this was a fun episode. We are sponsored by Anderson Interactive. And a reminder that we are always looking for brilliant marketers to join us for an upcoming Outside Insights segment. Email us your inbox with Adrian questions to hello at Anderson I, that's the letter I.com, or tweet us at Jen underscore Jennings, Tom underscore Testa, or Adrian underscore Stoner. And follow the hashtag over under radio. Thanks for listening to the Overrated and Under You Show with your hosts, experienced marketers, Jen Jennings and Tom Testa and special guests, Adrian Stoner. Over.